Chapter 19 Piper What's the matter? Belle asks as we prepare dinner Sunday night. It's my turn to cook, but because the rest of the girls rarely like what I choose, one of them always offers to help to add some sides that are preferred. I can't help it if my repertoire of what I can cook is limited. I thought things were going great. They were, but Friday I found out he lied to me. I thought about the conversation with Patrick the whole ride home that night and wrestled with it even more the next day. Though I felt like it was a big deal, I also wondered if I was making it a bigger deal than it was. Lied? About what? She places the potatoes she's just cut into a large baking dish and drizzles olive oil across the top. Charlie must not know she does that or she likely wouldn't eat the potatoes. Our first outing. He let me believe his therapist brother suggested it, but then his brother showed up Friday night, and when I thanked him for his suggestion of the speed dating event, he looked like he had no idea what I was talking about. I confronted Patrick and he admitted that he lied, or omitted the truth. Did he say why? He said he didn't think I would have said yes if I'd known it was his friend's idea and not his brother's. Belle tilts her head and taps her chin for a minute. And would you have? I don't know, but that is not the point. He should have been honest with me. If he'll lie about something so simple, how can I trust him moving forward? Belle's face scrunches for a minute before she smooths out the wrinkles. I mean, I guess you could look at it as lying, but I would look at it a different way. He liked you a lot and knew you well enough to know that you wouldn't just take his advice or his friends. I stop what I'm doing and ponder that. I don't know. I'm just worried that he's going to turn out like Ian did. One little lie turns into a much bigger lie and then he ghosts me. I don't think I could take it again. Patrick is not Ian, so I wouldn't put him in that camp yet. I think he really likes you and he simply wanted to be sure you'd go out with him to see how good the two of you are together. So you think I should give him another chance? Definitely, Belle says with a wide smile. She sprinkles some salt and pepper on the potatoes and places them in the oven. Then she begins putting a side salad together. Twenty minutes later, I'm setting the table. Charlie and Katie emerge from their rooms and we all sit down. Should we wait for Hannah? Charlie asks, looking at the empty chair. I don't know. Does anyone know where she went? Katie asks, pulling out her phone to see if Hannah texted her ETA. She went to the mall to return something, Belle says. She should be back any minute unless the return lines were enormous, though usually they aren't bad until Christmas. So wait then or go ahead and start, I ask. I think start, Katie says. We have no idea how long she'll be and the food is going to get cold if we just sit here. The rest of us agree and we begin dishing up our plates. We haven't gotten far into the meal when the front door flies open and Hannah enters, a pinched expression on her face. What's the matter, Hannah? Is everything okay? Katie asks. Hannah presses her lips together and shakes her head. No, I'm afraid not. Her eyes shift to mine and I know it's bad news. It's about Patrick. Is he okay? Concern floods me, even though I haven't spoken with him since Friday night. Horrible thoughts parade through my head. He was injured in an accident, maimed, killed. But then I realize Hannah wouldn't know about any of that unless she saw it happen. He seemed okay, she says hesitantly as she sits down in the empty chair. I saw him at the mall with his daughter. She pauses, but I remain silent, knowing there is more. And a woman. 
I don't know that they were together, but his daughter was between them, holding each of their hands. A squeezing sensation grips my heart. This can't be happening. Not again. But it could have just been a friend, right, Hannah? Katie is clearly trying to ease the sting from this news, but it's not working. I suppose it could have been a friend, Hannah says, but an awfully close one. Has he mentioned a close female friend? I shake my head. No, only a guy named Chris and his brother Dave. I met two other female friends of his, but both were married. Or maybe it's an old friend who's just in town for a few days, Charlie says. Maybe someone he was close to or went to school with that he doesn't see often now, and that's why he didn't mention it. Or maybe he's just lying to me. I turn my focus to Belle. You said to worry if it became a pattern. Does this count? A pattern? Katie looks from Belle to me and back again, confusion creasing her forehead. What are you talking about? With a sigh, I tell them about the dinner Friday night and Patrick's lie of omission. Belle said that even if he had lied, it was probably a harmless one to get me to go out with him. But maybe that was wrong, too. Maybe he's just a liar. I don't think that's it, Belle says. He doesn't strike me as the type. Yeah, well, he didn't strike me as the type to cheat on me either. But then neither did Ian. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I send guys running to the hills for some reason. No, that's not it, the girls say, nearly in unison. But I'm not sure even they believe it. I think I should just call it quits. Clearly, I am not meant for a relationship. At least not now. Deep down, I hope they'll argue with me, convince me that it's not true. But I'm not surprised when they don't. What are you going to do about work? Charlie asks instead, and I sigh. I hadn't even thought of that. I can't go. I guess I'll have to see if the bosses will let me work from home. And if not, I'll have to use some sick time. I really think you should just talk to him, Belle says. At least give him a chance to explain. So he can tell me I'm too boring and predictable like Ian did? No thanks. I look down at my half-eaten plate, but suddenly I'm no longer hungry. Thanks for dinner, but I think I'm done. I take my plate to the sink and then head to my room. As soon as I shut the door, the reality of the situation sinks in and tears fill my eyes. What is wrong with me that I can't keep a guy interested for more than a few weeks? Am I destined to end up alone?